Hey Sugar Geeks, Liz here. Today I'm going to show you how I made this sculpted wizard staff from the new movie Onward. This is part of a really fun cake collaboration I did with a few of my other YouTuber friends. You should definitely go check out their videos when you're done watching this one. So let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing I'm doing is I am making my isomalt diamond. I did not have a diamond mold, so I did a fun experiment to see if I could make one using a cardboard stock and some aluminum foil tape, which I've used many times to make isomalt boards, so I thought, why not make an actual mold? So I downloaded a template of a diamond, which I have available on my website if you need it, and then I covered it all in aluminum foil tape, I folded it all up, and tape the sides just to make sure that it's as strong as possible because I'm putting a lot of ice malt in this. I'm using Simi Cakes ice malt that's pre-made but I also have an ice malt recipe on my website if you want to make some from raw ice malt granules. And then I just stuck this inside of like a little silicone container to just kind of keep it steady while I pour my ice malt in. I just started with clear and added a little drop of yellow and a little drop of orange food coloring and just mix that up. I only used a drop because I wanted it to be really transparent still. It took me about a quarter cup of ice malt to fill this little gem. I didn't have to grease the mold or anything like that. It releases really easy from the aluminum foil tape, so that's nice. And then I poured the extra onto a silicone mat and just let that cool for a couple minutes and then used my hands with gloves on to kind of squish it into this little mountain shape because the gem from the movie Onward is, is not flat on top. And then to put together my structure, I'm starting off with a 12 inch cake board from Cake Boards of Air, it's wooden, and I'm adding a half inch metal flange and half inch um, screws. The heads are wide enough so that they're not gonna go through the holes and I'm just screwing that into the board. And then we have a half inch male adapter and some half inch PVC pipe, shocker. I'm using some PVC pipe cutters to just cut that down to about uh, three, actually I think it was five inches tall. And then I'm putting a, a T adapter on top and then two more pieces of PVC pipe on either side, about three inches long. So this is gonna be the hand holding the staff, but right now it's just kind of like straight across. So I saw a tutorial where you could take a heat gun and warm up the PVC pipe and then you can bend it. So I used this opportunity to give it a try and oh my gosh, it actually worked. So you do have to hold it in place for a couple minutes until the PVC pipe dries, but once it, or once it cools, but once it cools, it is super sturdy and firm and is not moving anywhere. So success on that one. Now I'm going to color my modeling chocolate. Uh, this is just brown, <laughs> so I took some leftover green modeling chocolate that I had and some white and just added warm brown food coloring to it until I had like a medium brown color. No secret technique here. When you're making brown, it's always a great excuse to use leftover colors because multiple colors mashed together it always makes brown. And then I'm just torching that little piece that I made earlier and attaching it to the top of my crystal so that it becomes one. I love my kitchen torch. It's like my favorite tool in the kitchen. And then just continue to, to let that cool down. So now I have one eighth inch armature wire. You can get this on Amazon. And I cut them into about 12 inch pieces and wrapped the base with some aluminum foil tape. Uh, and then just wrap those around the top of the PVC pipe. And I'm creating that those little prongs on the wizard staff that makes it look like it's kind of wrapping around the gem. You wanna use 1 8 inch armature wire just because it's, it's gonna be thick enough and strong enough to support the weight of the modeling chocolate. And then you wanna cover all of the wire, all of the PVC pipe, everything, and more aluminum foil tape. By the way, you can get aluminum foil tape in the heating and cooling aisle at like hardware stores, or you can buy it online. It only costs like five or $6 and will last you a very long time. So just cover everything all up. This is gonna help the modeling chocolate and fondant stick to the surface of this smooth PVC pipe. It also makes it food safe. It's just good practice. We're not making a cake here. This is just a fun sculpture. So now I get to remove the outside mold of my diamond. I was actually shocked how pretty this ended up looking and how nice it worked. 
Um, the surface was a little bit rough because of the aluminum foil tape, but I actually think that kind of lended itself to the look of it. But I did use my kitchen torch and a silicone mat to just kind of flatten out a few super rough spots so that it looked really um, shiny and nice on the sides because I'm gonna put a light behind this and I wanted um, everything to look really shiny and clear like a real gem. So I'm just using my kitchen torch to just uh, melt down the surface a tiny bit and then I press it against the silicone mat to flatten it out until it, it cools down. So you can see the light shines really pretty behind the, the isomalt and it's gonna look really magical, I hope. All right, so now I'm just gonna cover my whole structure in my, uh, my modeling chocolate mixture. This did take a while just because whenever you're covering big surfaces with modeling chocolate, it's just a lot of work. I, I heated up the modeling chocolate for like 15 seconds to just get it soft, but then you have to knead it until you know it's workable. And then if you knead it too much, it's too soft. And then when you start putting it on the structure, it wants to be really lumpy. So you have to, use, you have to spend a lot of time with your hands kind of smoothing things out. But the great thing is, is that it all kind of molds together and you can hide your seams really easily. So that's really nice. Um, I ended up using like a little plastic modeling tool um, to kind of smooth out any lumps and bumps. I also use the palm of my hand a lot to do some smoothing. Um, wearing gloves helps a lot. These are pink nitrile gloves, N-I-T-R-I-L-E. Uh, I like these a lot for when I'm working with ice malt and modeling chocolate just because it keeps my hands from getting burned and also keeps them from getting sticky, which I hate both of those things, so it's great. So you can see I'm just using my modeling tool here to just kind of create that twisted branch look, you know. Um, each one of those prongs is meant to look like it's just kind of twisting together to create the staff. Um, I'm always I'm looking at a reference photo, so I didn't just like memorize what the staff looks like. I have a reference photo just off to the right on my laptop. And then I'm using my tool to add in some lines and some texture to make it look like branchy, you know, that you don't want to just be flat. So all of these texture lines are just going to help it look more like a piece of wood. Keep in mind whenever you're adding texture lines that you're moving with the flow of the wood. I'm keeping it all very spiral looking. I added a little knot in there too. Um, don't just like add lines willy-nilly. Make sure that your lines are going with the flow of the whole piece and uh, that will just make it look really nice. So you can see I'm just finishing up on those ends there. And then I'm just taking some ivory food coloring gel uh, with a brush and I'm just gonna brush that all over the surface of the staff. This is modeling chocolate, so it does kind of want to repel that gel a little bit, but it's not too bad. And um, basically we just want that color to go down into the grooves and the texture of the, the staff because we're gonna wipe it away with a damp paper towel and that's something I do all the time. It's like such an easy <laughs> kind of way to make a you know wooden texture really pop. So you see all that color just kind of sits down there in the lines and looks really impressive, but it was super easy. So now you know all my secrets to making a realistic wooden texture. It's no secret at all, it's just laziness. <laughs> So now I'm making my blue modeling chocolate. This actually was a challenge, getting this very specific kind of blue color. Mine ended up looking kind of green at first, which is why you see gray here. And I had to like color correct all of the gray by adding in red, and then I added in royal blue to make this kind of blue color. And it's a little bit dark, but it looks okay in the end. So I'm just covering the base of the PVC pipe with a thin layer of modeling chocolate first to make the wrist. And then I formed kind of like a bar of soap shape and cut that in half and applied half of it to the back side of the PVC to make the back part of the hand. And then I cut the other piece in half again and used that to form the base of the palm. And, I, uh, and now I'm forming the thumb and I know this is not a lot of detail, but there's really no trick to this other than I just kind of look at my own hand. It's like, okay, here's my palm, here's the back of my hand. Oftentimes I would just like wrap my hand around the staff and just see how my hand looks compared to what I was sculpting. 
I have another tutorial on YouTube that's a Hulk fist that kind of breaks down this a little bit more too if you want to watch that one. And now I'm just making my fingers, just rolling out big long sausage-like pieces of modeling chocolate. And then I use this uh, wedge sugar shaper to create a fingernail and I just kind of round out the tip of the finger so that it's not super blunt looking. And then I'm just gonna place that on top of the staff to make it look like the fingers are wrapping around it. And you just wanna make sure that you use your fingers to push towards the knuckles to kind of make these little peaks. So if you just wrap this modeling chocolate straight over the top of the staff, it's just gonna look really weird because it doesn't have any knuckles. So just, uh, yeah, use your fingers to kind of make knuckles as you're putting them on. This is a little more of a close-up shot of making the finger using the sugar shaper. Top of the nail is flat and straight. Don't forget that front edge. And then you round the bottom to create the bottom of the fingertip. I actually really like making hands, so I do it a lot. So you can see it's really round and looks weird right now. So um, I did put a little bit of water on top of the modeling chocolate just to make it tacky. Um, when you, you want a little bit of water, otherwise it's not gonna stick to each other. Yep, there it is, there's the water. <laughs> I was like, I thought I'd put water in this. And then you can see I'm just kind of using my fingers to pinch and make those knuckles. Just take a look at your own finger. You'll be able to see pretty easily the sections of your hand. And then on the back, um, right, where the, right where the knuckle meets the hand, I just kind of flatten that down into like a long V shape. And that sort of represents the, uh, the muscles on the back of your hand, ligaments, <laughs> tendons, tendons, that's what I was thinking. So just continue this same process with the other two fingers. Um, keep in mind that your middle finger is the longest and your, your ring and your pinky get shorter from there. So as you're wrapping the fingers around the staff, you uh, wanna make sure that your fingers get shorter. And just smoothing that back. I meant to make this hand a little bit more cartoony, but it just did not work out that way. <laughs> I think I just my style is very realistic, so things tend to end up looking very realistic, which is fine. It's okay to put your own style on things, right? Using my favorite little tool here to just smooth out that hand and then we're done. I also added a couple little lines for the knuckles and a couple creases on the fingers. All right, time to cover my board. Do you have to cover your board? No. Do I always cover my board? Most of the time, because I like it. So I'm just rolling out some gray fondant and painting the surface with some black food coloring. I'm going for a um, like road pavement type look, sprinkling on some leftover sanding sugar that I had laying around, and then I'm just torching the surface to melt it. It's gonna look like creme brulee basically um, because it all melts down all the color disappears so it didn't really matter what color the sanding sugar was I just want a nice crunchy surface on top it also looks really shiny after you torch it so that's kind of cool and then um, you should let this like cool down fully before you roll it out but I did not let it cool down so it got a little soft when I started adding it to the base and then you're going to heat up a piece of 1 8 inch armature wire with your kitchen torch. And then you're gonna insert that into the base of your um, diamond. Be careful, you should be wearing gloves. I'm not wearing gloves because I'm stupid, so don't be stupid like me. And then let that wire cool down. So you can see my fondant is very floppy still. <laughs> kind of stretched out more than I wanted it to. But I was not gonna redo it, so I just squished it on there and made it work. Looks like some kind of weird animal print. Doesn't really look like what I was going for at all, but it's fine. Nobody knows except for me and you guys now. So now I'm rolling out some red fondant. I'm gonna make the cuff of his arm. I did not measure this, uh, I just kind of winged it. I'm using a little roller that puts stitches. I don't know why my camera is going blurry, but yeah, I put some stitches around the edges. 
And then I watered down some black uh, airbrush color with a little bit of Everclear so that when I brushed it onto the surface, it was just very transparent and kind of made it look like a lighter gray color. And then did across the center and then came back in with full, uh, you know, not watered down airbrush color and just colored the, the, the square where they overlap to make it look like plaid. And then you want to let this dry, otherwise the color gets all over your hands and everything. <laughs> so let that dry and then just wrap it around the base. The part where I put the stitches, I just overlapped and added a little piece of white fondant, added a couple dots for buttons, and voila, it looks beautiful. Now I'm adding a little bit of white food coloring. Um, this is watered down just a little bit. And I'm just adding a tiny bit to the fingernails just to give them a little bit of difference in color. So it's not just the same color as the hands. Our wire on our gem is cooled down. So I'm gonna fold that wire in half, wrap it with some aluminum foil tape. This is gonna give it some stability so it's not wobbly. Move those prongs out of the way and you just should be able to push it right down into the center. I did crack my gem just a tiny bit because I was a little bit rough with the wire. So just be aware of that and be careful with yours. Don't be so rough with it. <laughs> and then I just kind of moved my uh, you know, prongs back around the outside of the gem and I just kind of tucked one of the lights inside one of those prongs, you can't really see, but I basically made a hole in the fondant and just hid the light in the fondant and put it behind the gem so that it lit up. Last thing I did was use my kitchen torch to just remove any imperfections on the surface of the modeling chocolate of the hand and then we're done. Look how beautiful that looks. The light looks awesome. I actually had a really good time making this. Be sure to check out the other YouTube videos um, and all of the amazing projects that everybody made for this really fun collaboration for the new movie Onward. And I'm really excited to actually see the movie. So let me know what you guys think of this in the comments and I'll see you guys next week. Bye.